Mm. Well, I want to talk very quickly before we get in all of Raw about the two big things that happened last week that we got to follow up on this week. One of them was Retribution, and one of them was Raw Underground. And just very quickly, Raw Underground, I thought, was a little bit better, but it's still not working for me, but it was better. Retribution is just the dumbest, just the dumbest storyline. Nobody looks intimidating. They may as well be the ninjas. And after invading the Performance Center on SmackDown and running amok with bats and chainsaws and sending everybody running, the follow-up on Raw was they threw a cinder block through the glass door of the Performance Center, didn't go in, they just threw a block through the window, then they went, ah, yeah, they high-fived each other, and they ran off into the night. And then later, there was a vehicle that had been tipped over, so maybe Braun Strowman's in retribution, <laughs> and the vehicle is tipped over, and these dorks go, ah, yeah, they high-five, and they move off into the night. That was the follow-up. It's impossible for me to care. Literally impossible for me to care. Actually, I, I do care mildly because there is a part of me that can't wait to see what they do on SmackDown. To follow up this compelling television. <laughs> now, as far as Raw Underground, all right? These were the improvements to Raw Underground, okay? The improvements were Arturo Huas and Shayna Baszler. Because Arturo Huas is the real deal, and Shayna Baszler is the real deal. So, if you're gonna do something like Raw Underground, I mean, to me, the only way that it works is if you're doing, like, a legitimate, believable shooting style, okay? Now, there's still a million problems. Like, well, why doesn't Shayna shoot on her opponents in the pro wrestling? I mean, there's a million. But as far as just, like, watching it, the only way that something like Raw Underground works is if it's, like, UWFI. And they're actually going in there, and, and the participants know what they're doing, and they can believably fake shoot on each other to a degree, and, like, that's it. And it's two minutes, and you move on, okay? The problem is that Arturo Huas's opponent had no earthly idea what he was doing. So you have one guy who gets it, and another guy who doesn't, and so... It was okay, like I enjoyed watching Arturo Huas go neon belly and pound on this dude, but the other guy is just completely helpless. And Shane McMahon's on the outside going, ah, get up! I'm like, get up? Bro, let's put Arturo Huas on top of you, and let's see if you can get up. Every stupid coach there's ever been. And then, I, I learned later, when Shayna Baszler was there in the ring, there were three women, Okay. And she just beat them all up, and they were just like, you know, geeks in the crowd or whatever. I, I thought that these were like supposed to be training center students, but I guess they're just supposed to be observers. One of them, I don't know her last name, but her name is Emily. And she's on the Titan Games, and she is legit. She trains jujitsu. She's had an MMA fight. She's done this. So, like... If anybody could get in there and do this believably with Shayna ba Baszler, it would be this Emily. Well, Emily was told, don't do any of this. Just pretend you don't know what you're doing, and Shayna Baszler is going to beat you up. So what's the point? So they had these these fights, and there was one other fight as well. It was, uh, I don't even remember who it was with. but uh, Dalvikato. Uh, no, that was, there was actually another one. Cal Bloom and Riddick Moss. Oh, God. At least these two guys, it was like a tough man fight. They just oh. scrambled with each other like two crazy people for two minutes. They got totally blown up, and then Shane McMahon called the fight off. Better than Herb Dean would have done. I mean, I guess that was okay. But, I mean, my main question is, what's the point? 